Hundreds of volunteers are set to trial a new vaccine against coronavirus over the coming weeks as part of a project led by scientists at Imperial College London. Experts at Oxford University have already started a separate trial. The studies are among more than a dozen vaccines being trialled around the world right now, but the one being developed by Imperial College uses a revolutionary new approach, which means that only a timely dose should be needed. If it works, the team says it should have enough to immunise 40 million people in the UK by the middle of next year. Our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh, was given exclusive access to the trial. Coronavirus has transformed all our lives, and although restrictions are easing, there's only one certain way out of the pandemic, one way to protect us all from the virus, to return society to normal, and that's a vaccine. Never has science responded so fast to a global health threat. What usually takes years has been done in months. There are now more than 120 coronavirus vaccines in early development. 13 have begun human trials, five in China, three in the United States, two in the UK, and one each in Australia, Germany and Russia. We'll need several to work if there's to be enough doses to protect seven billion people on the planet. After Oxford University, now Imperial College London is the latest to begin trials. Cathy, who's 39, is one of 300 volunteers who'll receive the Imperial vaccine. She'll get a second booster dose in four weeks. Why did you volunteer? I think it came from not really knowing what I could do to help, um, and this turned out to be something that I could do, and understanding that it's not likely that things will get back to normal until there is a vaccine, so wanting to be part of that progress as well. If the safety trial goes well, a further 6,000 volunteers will be immunised in the autumn. Trials might also need to happen overseas, in virus hotspots, because that's the only way researchers will know for sure if it offers protection. I wouldn't be working on this trial if I didn't feel cautiously optimistic that we will see great immune responses in our participants. But there's still a long way to go to evaluate this vaccine. This is a really unusual vaccine. The synthetic genetic code it contains should instruct muscle cells to produce the spike protein found on the surface of coronavirus. That should prompt the creation of antibodies. And that army of antibodies should remain on guard in case of future exposure to coronavirus. And if it works, prevent infection. Because it's all created artificially, with no need to grow any virus, the vaccine can be manufactured on a huge and concentrated scale. It means that we can make the equivalent of two million doses in the volume of, of a litre. So you imagine a litre bottle of lemonade, that would have two million doses in it. So when you want to start making vaccine for the world, if this is successful, and that's still a big if, it makes it so much more tractable because you don't have to build a factory the size of several warehouses. Imperial College say they could have enough doses ready to immunise 40 million people in the UK by next summer. But trials must first show the vaccine is safe and effective. Fergus Walsh, BBC News. Now, leading health organisations are urging ministers to carry out a review to establish if the UK is properly prepared for another outbreak of coronavirus. The presidents of the Royal Colleges of Physicians, Surgeons, GPs and Nurses have outlined their concerns in a letter published in the British Medical Journal. It comes as the number of deaths from coronavirus registered in the last 24-hour period rose to 154. The total number of deaths in the UK so far is now 43,081. Our science editor, David Chukman, has been comparing the UK's experience with that of countries around the world. Memories are still raw of the relentless pressure when the coronavirus was spreading with dangerous speed. Those days have now passed. But health professionals say many lessons need to be learned in case the virus surges again. 
We still don't have an answer as to why my colleagues from the Black, Asian, minority ethnic groups are more likely to die from this illness. These are all things that urgently need looking into in a no-blame, forward-looking way so that we can be prepared and put measures in for a potential second wave in October and the winter. So what's the state of the virus right now? Well, things have definitely been going in the right direction. This line is a rolling seven-day average of new infections across the UK, far lower now than it was at the peak back in April. But let's compare that to the rest of Europe. In the UK, we're getting about 1,000 new infections every day. Germany, France, Italy, Spain, all getting far fewer. Again, this is a one-week average for the numbers, and that gives them a much better chance to tackle any new outbreaks. In Portugal, restaurants in the capital, Lisbon, have had to close, again, because of a rise in cases. A swift response is needed, even in countries with low levels of virus. We have been able to show in Western Europe with a lot of effort, that we can slow the spread. But we are not, as a world, on top of this pandemic. It's really very much with us, and it will be with us for months, perhaps even years to come. And while Europe now has some control over the virus, row after row of new graves is being dug in Brazil. In many developing countries, the disease is now escalating. Hospitals are under strain. And in the slum districts of the big cities, social distancing just isn't possible. How can you work in a crowded barrio or favela where people live next to each other? And, and, and not only next to each other, but also in many cases in very non-ventilated rooms. Families living in one room. Mexico is also seeing a sharp rise in infections. But this hospital had to be evacuated after an earthquake. Yet another challenge as the pandemic reaches more and more of the people least able to cope. David Shukman, BBC News. And in America, New York and the neighbouring states of New Jersey and Connecticut are introducing a 14-day quarantine period for visitors from nine other U.S. states with high rates of coronavirus infection. New cases of COVID-19 in the U.S. have risen to their highest level since April. Let's talk to our North America editor, John Sopel, in Washington. John, when experts talk there, how serious do they think this situation is? It's grim and getting grimmer, Hugh. There are now 26 states in America where they've seen more COVID cases this week than they did last week. A handful of the biggest states, Florida, Texas, California, Arizona, are seeing massive spikes with thousands of new cases being reported each day. A hospital in Houston, uh, they've got 97% occupancy of intensive care beds. Now, Donald Trump says this is all because of uh, increased testing. His public health experts say it's far more serious than that. And if you compare the US to the European Union, the difference is really stark. It's something like 100,000 of population six or seven times worse in America than Europe. And that's leading the EU to consider introducing a travel ban on passengers coming from America into Europe. And that would be a damning verdict on Donald Trump's handling of coronavirus. It would also be a very bold move by the EU because it's bound to infuriate the president. This is much more than just a simple public health issue. John, many thanks again. John Sopel there, our North America editor in Washington. Back here in the studio, our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh, is with me. That's the picture in the States, uh, Fergus, and John spelled that out there. You were telling us earlier about these trials and uh, this vaccine which holds out some promise at uh, Imperial College. Um, tell us about the prospects of that and how you read it. Well, a vaccine is the only guaranteed exit strategy from this pandemic, and we've seen a record rise in daily infections globally. Now, drug treatments will help. We had the breakthrough last week with the steroid dexamethasone. Better drugs will follow. But that's treating the illness. What we need to do is prevent people getting infected in the first place. And only a vaccine can do that. Now, if either the Oxford or the Imperial vaccines work, there'll be enough doses for the UK with healthcare workers and vulnerable groups getting immunised first. Indeed, Oxford has done a deal to create 
2 billion doses of its vaccine, enough for Europe, for the US and India. The trouble is, Hugh, it could be many months, perhaps well into next year, before we know if any of the vaccines around the world actually work and how effective they are. Do they protect the elderly, where vaccines don't normally work so much? Um, it's likely that most of the coronavirus vaccines will fail, but we just need one or two of them to work to really transform the fight against coronavirus. Fergus, once again, many thanks. Fergus Walsh there, our medical correspondent.